And you're watching World Insights. Still to come in the program, China's frontline agency in battling infectious disease, the Chinese CDC, an exclusive inside look and up close with the agency chief, Dr. Gao Fu. Welcome back. This is World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. Since the pandemic outbreak more than a year ago, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention has pulled out all the stops in dealing with the invisible enemy. The Chinese CDC scientists were the first in the world to identify the novel coronavirus. They shared its genome sequence with the world and later helped develop latest test kits and even vaccines. Earlier, I talked to Dr. Gao Fu, director of the China CDC, who shared with me their study on the virus, on virus variations, as well as his views on global cooperation. Before our conversation, first, let me show you around their high security lab and introduce to you his colleagues who are working hard to study the novel coronavirus. <laughs> So this is the monitoring group for our biosafety lab. Now here you can see from this picture, and uh, we have staff. Uh, one of them is Huawei, Dr. Huawei, right? Is at the moment working in the P3 lab. So they are handling the virus. And here you can from this screen, we have from different angles to monitor the whole lab. And this is the place. In this institute, we have seven BSR3 labs. So here. Early January last year, we isolated the virus. We initiated the seed virus isolation. So that virus is very important for the inactivated vaccine. Right. So there, because you have the virus seed, the seed virus was growing here and used for the vaccine development. Okay. For the clinical trials, for the phase one and phase two, um, at the moment for uh, Sinopharm. Sinopharm's first batch for the Phase one, phase two, the vaccine was produced here. We converted this lab-based BRS3 into a workshop-like BRS3 to produce a vaccine for the vaccine development. I see. Oh, this is a real heroin. Uh, the, all the vaccine seed was uh, chosen and developed by Dr. Bao Yin Huang. And he uh, worked in the PSL3 lab for several hours every day. So you can see the, this, this, this is a monk. He's working in the PSL3 lab in, because he needed to wear the protection uh, clothes. And the, uh, this, uh, uh, Dr. Ye is also uh, uh, working in the PSL several hours every day. He tested the uh, more than 200 uh, drug the, 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 the inhibit candidate, uh, including the uh, and Lian Hua Qing Wen and interferon uh, gamma alpha. This is the, at the moment the emergency center. So uh, we also decided so that this, this lab will also be the national uh, center for coronavirus. So be the reference and the research lab. Hopefully it will be the international reference lab. This is the first picture uh, in the world. Uh, the oh, take the of, virus. Yeah, yeah, just taken by National Institute for Viral Disease Control and the Prevention, China CDC. At night, roughly about 11 or 6, 12. Oh, the six. Yeah, six uh, land. And uh, we collect the sample early morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., yeah, yeah. on the 7th, we saw the future. I went to one of the neighborhoods in Beijing, uh, near the Shicha High Lake. In fact, I even took some photos of people lining up in front of the vaccination stations. 
And I asked some of them. Some are very young. They are just uh, volunteers from the neighborhood, and they feel that they want to have it, want to have the vaccine. I'm sure a similar situation will happen in, around China. So Dr. Gao, uh, when you say 50 million, uh, what are we looking at when it comes to a year or half a year? What is the number that you are aiming for? So as, as we already discussed, you are talking about 70 to 80 yes. percent. So for that percentage, 1.4 billion, roughly, you are talking 0.9 billion, billion or yes. you know, 1 billion, billion yeah. some, something like that. Yeah. You know, this is something we are... Um, By what time? Um, by the end of th this year, I hope. Of course, if uh, again, if that's you if you if you push very hard, I hope it before that. So that's your dream for this yeah. year. Yes, you got to have a dream. You know, I have a dream. You know, the human being, we will be the winner. We don't know the virus to be the winner. Talking about the vaccine, the WHO has sent its research team to. Uh, research about the vaccine origin together with the Chinese scientists. I know you personally together with some of your colleagues with China CDC also participated. But from the Chinese scientists perspective, what are the issues that you are concentrating on? What are the issues that you think with expertise they are bringing and the collaboration they could bring also uh, that would help China also to advance it's cause about learning about the virus and also dealing with the virus. So the joint team, why we have WHO joining us? Because we have different uh, experts. They have they are, they are different expertise. You know, they have someone working for the animal virus, someone working on the ecology, mm -hmm. and they have someone working on the clinical virus. They have someone also the epidemiology. You know, different kind of fields they are working. And in China, we, of course, we worked for a year. We haven't found, found any animals. Uh, we, we don't have any clue for the origin. We are open. We are very open-minded. We like to have all these experts. They are experienced you know, in their own field mm -hmm. to get together, have a joint force. And of course, for China's team, we also have a different kind of uh, experts. You know, mm -hmm. We have some bioinformation experts. We have virologists, uh, epidemiologists. They are there. Um, you know, we are doing our own work. Of course, we are collaborating with the team, not only because they are visiting, but before that, we share the data, we have the open discussion, we have all this video conference with all of our colleagues. At least I heard from one of, of the team members and uh, told me and that they are working happily together. And they visited the uh, Jing Tai Hospital, like you said, they visited that uh, sea market. Uh, seafood market, I think, you know, uh, they are working uh, friendly. Now, we know that the U.S. has once again embraced international cooperation, global fight against the pandemic. Uh, is there much opportunity for China and the U.S. to work together? As a scientist, how do you see that? China and the U.S., we must work together. Uh, I keep saying, if we don't work together, the virus would work together. A good example, everybody is talking about why don't we try to stop the importation of the uh, variants of concern we will see from, you know, first isolated from the UK or from Brazil or from South Africa. But now it's everywhere already. So that's a good, good example. So this tells us we must work together. As you know, um, U.S. appointed a new CDC director, uh, Dr. Walensky. I wrote an email to congratulate her. So, um, you know, and I got an email back. We both believe we must work together. So it seems that the China CDC and the U.S. CDC directors are already in contact with one another. Is that the conclusion I could have? Yes, um, because Dr. Walensky just appointed and, you know, she took the job the same day um, as the president. So that's a U.S. system, the whole U.S. system. The CDC director is appointed by the president. What was the time like when China and the U.S. was working together on SARS? You know, when we had SARS outbreak um, in China, uh, you know, it took about, and everybody knows, three months, uh, 100, no 
it's a virus, what kind of virus we have. Yeah. Um, China, U.S. Um, uh, collaboration for SARS. We also, you know, from even from then, uh, also from the very beginning, you know, uh, of course, not as good as this time. So this time, because uh, uh, for 70 years, we set up this kind of collaboration, and um, the U.S. have their uh, so, um, experts working together with us, mm -hmm. and um, and the, also you know the U.S. help us uh, to train our staff. You know we always have these communications. I think even when we have SARS, we have the communication, but not as this time. You know we communicated very well. Mm -hmm. How how do you see you know this time this pandemic? Uh, some say I'm president for almost 100 years. Possibly true. I was talking to Peter Piat, who you know very well and work closely. Mm -hmm. My friend, yeah. And he was the co-discoverer of the Ebola virus back in the 1970s. And he told me that we are possibly, and very possibly, coming into a, quote, pandemic era. Do you believe so? I think his judgment, uh, based on uh, what we had with flu, you know, the first flu is 1918 um, uh, pandemic. Of course, before that, there's some suspected uh, pandemic, but never confirmed. Mm -hmm. So 1980, after 1918, and then we have 1957, right. 1968, a very small one, 1977, and a recent one, 2009 pandemic, you know, four more. So since now we know, Coronavirus adapted to human beings very well, of course, like 1918 flu. COVID-19, after COVID-19, we will have COVID-XY. I don't know which year, because from this we know coronavirus adapted to human very well, but the human beings are not adapted to the virus very well. If we adapt to the virus very well, we will get it done. Right. You know, so like some other virus, like CMV, um, herpes virus, we can survive, you know, friendly. The virus and the human being can survive friendly, kind of, quote, friendly. With this one, this is why I think, I, I haven't talked to Peter, but this is his, I, I have the same judgment. And then we will have pandemic with another coronavirus. Uh, we don't know how big, this is why we are calling for the generalized vaccine, you know, for a universal vaccine. Mm -hmm. Of course, for the flu, we are talking about universal vaccines for decades. We still haven't got one. Mm -hmm. And we now, from now on, at least we will have two viruses with a pandemic potential, the pressure, flu and corona. Right. So this is why I think, Peter, think we are in the pandemic era. How safe is China? Some were suggesting, theoretically speaking, since China's prevention and control is doing so well, is that putting China into a vulnerable situation once borders are open? Since the pandemic is still here, I don't think without the whole world safe, how can you have China safe? So that's general. Of course, everybody's talking about either the other countries, they are vaccinated, the population, the speed much higher than in China. Um, well, I think in China, we also try to do our best. As I said, we have more than 20 million people vaccinated. You know, to open the border, to also learn a lot for one year in China. You think, I don't think if you talk to a lot of people, they don't believe how China can get disease under control with 1.4 billion people and with the difference, the gap between the rural area and the city urban areas. You know, that's the fact. You know, you are safe. We are sitting here. Yes. So and you know, you, a lot of places, you don't need a, a mask already. But of course, we encourage everybody to wear a mask. But you feel, you know, you are safe. So that's a reality. Right. Of course, you know, without the, 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 vi without the virus suppressed, so we are still vulnerable. So once everybody opens the border, so, you know, we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll be one of the vulnerable countries. As you know very well, China has been doing a relatively great job 
compared to particularly the other parts of the world, our prevention control, the world has recognized that. However, what does that mean for all of us in terms of the methods that China used? Some have different opinions, such as the vastly digital collected data. Uh, there is debate in some other parts of the world between privacy and prevention and control data management. What is your take, Dr. Gao, of this kind of debate? Um, I think in my opinion, um, it, again, let me put the expression I usually use, balance between risk and benefit. Of course, if we don't have this outbreak as a pandemic, we also like not be want not to use that uh, so-called digital data whatsoever, but we have no other choice. We remember from the very beginning when we try to use this very kind of very harsh, very stringent, um, you know, lockdown of the border. You know, a lot of criticism there. From the very beginning, some other countries they might, some scientists even thought, for, based on common sense and knowledge, we might be able to get the herd immunity. Looks like that strategy doesn't work. I'm not saying, you know, because, uh, um, you know, I don't want to criticize anything. But that's the knowledge we know. For some viruses, the herd immunity would work. But in reality, by the end, we found it doesn't work. But we don't know. That's a limitation of the scientist's knowledge and thinking. So in this case, what we have done from the field in China. Why eventually a lot of people realize what China is doing or have been doing is good. That's because the results says something. The result itself says it's good. It's not speculation. It's not the result. You know, you look at, I, had a, um, I have a very good friend also called Peter, and he lived in another country. He sent me an email to say, George, you know, can I come and live in, in China? Because he still st stay at home. The, he knows, he has a lot of friends. He knows we still, you know, like you and me, we still have some really kind of free life. You know, the lo so-called lockdown, relatively, we are, you know, we have less, um, affect we, we are less uh, uh, affected, you know, inside China. Right. So in general, it's good, but that takes time for the rest to realize this is a good strategy. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, search World Insight or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.